All right, I'm going to crack us on. We're going to talk about some bits and bobs and stuff, and then we're going to come crack to, us on. We're going to no. come to octagon things. <laughs> um, to as, as, as as the free one is to Riley, James Acaster is to me. I hate him mm. so. I kind of like yeah. the James. He's, he's, Acaster. A, he's a charming fella. No, yeah. no, I don't hate. Well, I kind of. I don't hate James Acaster much. I hate the Riley James Acaster bit. <laughs> me, James Acaster. I don't have a James Acaster bit. Milo does. Uh, yeah, that's what Everyone's I meant. Talking about the Riley James <laughs> Acaster bit. <laughs> but nobody knows it. It's actually Milo. I slept no. so poorly last night. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're we're gonna crack on. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the free episode of TF. It's it, the it, free one. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I hate it now. <laughs> Managed to irritate <laughs> both of us. Oh, God, that is my specialty. <sighs> Why did I hire? So- oh, I forgot. Of course, I hired. I, I decided to work with someone <laughs> whose whole thing is basically irritating me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's because, our whole. You know vibe. why? Because mm. I'm an oyster, and you know how pearls are formed. Mm. Irritation. Constant yeah. irritation. It's a little yeah, grain of right. sand in Riley's mm. oyster. Yeah. yeah, it's me. That's you. It's the uh, James Acaster voice. <laughs> yeah. That's right. In Riley's voice. It's uh, Riley, Milo, and Alice. And we are joined once again by, I think, four or five time returning champion, Seamus Malikovzeli. Seamus, how's it going? Uh, it's going very well. Uh, as always, thankful to be back on the Trash Future program. Great program. Iconic program. Y- you get yeah. some kind of reward, I think, for being on the podcast this many times. Y- 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 you uh, get yeah. like access to like hot and cold drinks in the TF uh, like exclusive lounge. Oh, that's that's like when you come on once. When you're hitting Seamus numbers, you get like a, a comp upgrade. Uh, you can like you get a free pour of um, off label champagne, non vintage champagne. You can, you, you 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 can get any well drink. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. get to get sucked off in the special well, trash future fight gym. It's unlimited <laughs> well drinks, and then a welcome drink of either champagne or a premium spirit. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's no bad nibbles. deal. Yeah. So yeah. You, yeah. Thank you for coming All on the show ones. and uh, and and claiming your rewards. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, no, we um we are talking to Seamus today because we figured it was time to uh, revisit uh, uh, somewhere we've we've talked about recently. Um, not, sorry, not that recently, within the last couple of years. Uh, it's time to go back to Neom mm. uh, because w- when you know it, the future is being invented, and it's being invented in Neom Bay. Oh, and uh, happy neat. we are all about that. And there are some like crazy updates, but I don't want to sort of jump right into Neom because we have some home affairs stuff to handle first. So. Uh, Seamus, I'm sorry to expose you to a bunch of British stuff right off the bat. No, it's fine. I was in Pimlico for like a month. I gotta get out. Oh, so we're sorry. Go, we're going British. Yeah. Uh-huh. Bri- we are. British trash future. What if trash future yeah. was British? What yeah. if that? Uh, no, well, the, cause the thing is, uh, uh, t- TF and all the TF guests actually are being extended uh, an exclusive invite to the uh, Winter Affairs Party, uh, which is, of course, King- the Garden of the King's Bull in 2 North Street. And IG eleven eight ET. I don't know where IG is. The post. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna that's um, no. It's it's fucking it's Essex somewhere. It's yeah. like it's like that's like northeast London. Like it's kind of like Romford sort of area, Ilford around there. Right. Well, we've been all extended this uh, this in- invitation to a winter affairs party. Yeah, it's Ilford in Ilford. Yeah, We're going yeah. to a winter affairs party in Ilford to see DJ Skanks. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. DJ Skanks, Mad Influence, DJ Crickmar, DJ Skanks from Legion of Skanks, Jerome yeah. Six, Shen Inamara, O'Neill McDowell, hosted by the Range O'Neil Rover O'Neill McDowell, hosted by the Range Rover Mum. Oh, the mother of all the Range Rovers. Well, you remember who I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, who yeah. tried to run over the protesters? Yeah, yes, the that's right. Khaleesi <laughs> of like, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Too fucking right. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, wait, hold on. I, 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 unfortunately, I've been out of this sphere. For a long okay, time, okay. Was do, this do person? You know well, no, I, I don't. I don't need. I don't need a full thing because I feel like that okay. would take up the entirety of the hour. Is yeah. was this person made famous for running over Extinction Rebellion protesters? Yes. Well, the, the, the offshoot of Extinction Rebellion insulate Britain, but yes, yeah. she she yeah. she yeah. drove the offshoot of Extinction Rebellion. Who are or not? <laughs> yes, yeah. she drove yeah. into them uh, in her Range Rover. I don't think she like injured any of them. She just like bumped yeah. them. Uh, mm. uh, but it was kind of a near run thing, like sort of like yeah. you know, fifty millimeters on the gas pedal. It's the mm. difference between uh, her bumping somebody and becoming a right wing celebrity, and her being arrested for assaulting a police officer and becoming a right-wing celebrity. 
Yeah, and I think this one of the reasons I bring this up, right, is that I think you can number one is we're all going to this party, obviously. Obviously. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it's gonna you be never the number miss one a DJ spot. Skanks gig ever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is Chico gonna be there? Playing playing in his home club uh in Romford. But no, uh, the reason that I think it's worth bringing up, right, is this is to Ilford, me this seems be a like metropolitan elite, sorry, right? Like <laughs> sorry, this this seems like kind of there seems to be this parallel process happening in the UK and US where we take our right wing vigilantes beloved by Fox News, the Daily Mail or whatever, and then they are turned into celebrities. Yeah, and it's it's right? it's mm. like simultaneously very funny and very bleak that like in the US you have a figure like Kyle Rittenhouse who has now been sentenced to spend the rest of his life making tactical t-shirts or like uh, Confederate mm. flag art. Whereas yeah. here the like the stakes are so much lower because Britain is sort of a a soft play area. Um that mm. th- that we have our, our our equivalent our Kyle Brittenhouse is just this lady who like drove her range over into an old man yeah, yeah. you kyle brittenhouse yeah oh, just a uh a, a, an absolutely like a, a situation where what we've done is we've said yeah these th- there's a career path for you because we are not going to take seriously the idea at this point that you know what it is it's a group of people have been removed from what are informally considered us our yeah, team, the, people the, who the, are like, worth protecting, the, the, the law applies an, to. An outgroup whom the law binds but does not protect. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so we're just going to sort of like encourage this vigilantism and it's going to have no negative consequences in future. Because like, to not, not to like undersell this, but she really could have killed someone very easily. Um, yeah. And it, only by pretty much like good fortune that she didn't. And now she's doing, uh, you know, club nights with DJ yeah. Skanks. Now she's doing what would have been a Vice magazine big night out in 2008. <laughs> uh, but like, Seamus, I want to know, like, how, does this, how does this trend right, strike you? Um, it strikes me as, I mean, entirely inevitable. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to go like, you know, Adam Curtis with the, uh, you know, the social media age and digital age and how you retreat into finding uh, heroes that have done less and less and less and less as less and less things, less change happens. Mm. Um, There's no real assessment you can make other than it's deeply upsetting. Not Mm. in that I think it's emblematic of some massive shift rightward, but just it's pathetic. I think it it is a shift within the right to a more kind of pathetic politics. Yeah, not not a shift rightward in the sense like not like um as in this this alone would shift us toward fascism, but just mm. yeah, the right wing is becoming increasingly more desperate for new figures, and the new figures that are coming up are you know I mean I mean they're they're Kyle Rittenhouse. I mean yeah, there was like there was like photos of his face splattered across every single page of him fake sobbing, recounting yeah. um how he killed three people. Yeah, um yeah. It's it's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to have a fascist tendency that's so pathetic, apart from anything else. But I guess fascism is always pathetic, and that's the thing: is that like a uh, win or lose, and they've managed to you know do both. They're still going to be like really cringe, I guess. Well, Alice, this actually goes back to something I remember you saying probably a couple of years ago, hmm. which is that you know all nationalism at its core is wounded. Yeah, of it's course. Always it has wounded. to be. It has to be. There has and to be some sort of like uh, betrayal, there has to be some sort of like uh, enemy within, and there has to mm-hmm. be a, a sense of like recovering something that has been lost. And, and, and in this the, case, the, what the, you have lost is the ability to uh, like drive into an old man. Yeah. <laughs> What they took away from us was DJ Skanks, and we're bringing him back. <laughs> in the olden well, the, days, um, you used to be able to drive your Range Rover over as many people as you wanted, but then the populists... Uh, yeah, it was to get to the front of the DJ Skanks. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the only way. Out of my way. I'm, up, I'm off to the front left. Um, but also the other thing, right? I think it's emblematic of an institutional change, where there is an increasing demand placed on authority in general to manage this new outgroup and make them go away, whether that's Black Lives Matter protesters, that's the police in Extinction Rebellion, all of the different police officers in yeah. Extinction Rebellion th- trying to get each other to do there stuff. There is another angle here, too, uh-huh. which is, uh, of, 
like America, uh, only America could have produced Carl Rittenhouse because his act of vigilantism was one that was so militarized and was so tactical. Like he was claiming that he was going to be an EMT or whatever. He had the AR-15. That that's a wholly American tradition. It makes total sense for the the British fascist equivalent to be motorized and to be a motorist. Like if you think about like Priti Patel doing pushbacks in the channel with like a jet skis and shit. It's the exact same thing. We are basically a nation of aggrieved drivers. Yeah, and micro-celebrities. Right. And micro-celebrities micro -celebrities also. Yes. But look, the last thing I was saying I, before we sort of move on from this as well is just the, the, I think the other thing I think this goes to what you were saying, Seamus, when I talk about an institutional transformation in the right and the demands on authority is that author official authority hasn't caught up yet to those demands. And so vigilantism is, I think, basically inevitable. As sort of those, as if, and, and the thing is, in Britain, official authority is doing its damnedest to catch up to those demands with stuff like the uh, Nationality and Borders Bill, with the uh, Police Crime and Sentencing Bill, like the ability, like, like the, the, the decision to declare Hamas a terrorist organization and put any supporter of theirs in jail for 10 years. Even things, like, even things like the covert yeah. human intelligence sources bills, like, um, yeah. you know, allowing uh, police officers and intelligence agents to break the law, that's all very well, but like, in, until you extend it to Ilford mums, uh, mm -hmm. there's always going to be vigilantism pushing it to that point. It's a pro MILF policy, and we respect mm -hmm, that. I mm -hmm. think yeah. that this woman should get a slot on like Loose Women, or she should be given Jeremy Kyle's old show or something. And her suggestion to solve every problem should be some kind of vehicular violence. <laughs> that would be awesome. I mean, it's basically what's going to happen. In five years' time, mm -hmm. we're going to be we're going to be laughing at you for having lathed this. Yeah, she's going to Prime Minister like... Range Rover mum has once again <laughs> yeah. run over a big yeah. trench full of dissidents in Trafalgar Square. She's legally changed her name to that. Yeah. Viv yeah. Rook, is, <laughs> Al Viv Rook in real life is going to be the Range Rover mum. She does have a branding of Range Rover mum, and there's like a and there's a logo of like a woman with a slit up the thigh dress. Yeah, because mm. the Range Rover mums are not only scary; they're also sexy. That's, right. That's why I don't trust you to talk about this or think about this at all, my love. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I would be an honor to be run over by such a fine <laughs> specimen of a woman. No, I think honestly, the Range Ro Range Rover mum is going to end up being like Britain's Meghan McCain. And she'll oh, actually yeah. represent a real political constituency, like the real Megan. McCain. Like even even if it's a flash in the pan, like there's going to be another thing like this and another thing like this, and so on and so on and so on. So yeah, and then that's the and it's. But I think it's what we're seeing is just this, the the this this vigilantism that ends up getting celebrated mm -hmm. is I think the product of this institutional shift, this disjunct between the demands and the legal abilities of authority. Um, but my goodness, in Britain, it is catching up much more quickly than it is catching up in the U.S. And yet, and yet, the stakes are again so much lower. <laughs> much, much lower. Oh yeah. I mean, we love. We're a nation of petty tyrants. Yeah, absolutely. That's we all there love is. It. We yeah. absolutely love it. No. Um. But that's look. Britain. I'm. I'm tired of it. I don't want to talk about Britain until the very end again. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Rivian. Now. We'll talk about a May normal not. country, the United States of America, and then later Absolutely. we'll talk about a still more normal country, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that's right. Geralt of Rivian. Uh, so, <laughs> Riv Rivian, uh, so, uh, Seamus, are you familiar with Rivian? Um, I don't even, I don't know if I am. Are they, I know that they're an electric car company. Mm -hmm. um, I think I want to say that the main thing that they were, that like, set them apart was that I want to say they all came with like a frame and you could put in a new car, like their new models. Is that what it is? Riley, am I, am Riley I enthusiastically nodding like a teacher. Mm, oh, uh, am I actually good? No, no, no. Uh, no, it's what I think more of the, the more, the bigger Rivian um, promise, right? Was that we're going to do Tesla, but we're going to do Tesla for commercial fleets. And so it's going to be very cheap, very modular. Okay. Uh, and so they, they had a tie up with Amazon where they were going to give their Amazon said we're going to invest 1.3 billion dollars into Rivian, uh, which then IPO'd recently, spike at its value hugely spike at, to the point actually where Amazon's 1.3 billion dollar investment in Rivian again this electric truck and fleet vehicle manufacturer a bit like Lordstown but I think it works a little bit better. Mm. Um, so if you want to know by the way how much Amazon has made from its investment in Rivian, it owns 20 percent of the company, and that as of as of recording. 
Uh, that would be worth about $30 billion, which is about as much as Amazon's 2019 and 2020 net income combined. Right. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, fuck. The economy is very normal, isn't it? I think it all makes sense. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like a sort of a harbinger of anything bad mm-hmm. that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so but, invest in this company. Uh, if that's, and that legally, is that advice. is investment advice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, um, so Rivian, which again has made approximately, yeah, about a thousand trucks or so, um, is now worth $777 billion, or it was at least when it, de- when it debuted. Awesome. Wait, it's hold, awesome. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask some clarifying questions here. Yes, please. How many cars has Tesla built? Is there, is there a number on that? Uh, some hundreds of thousands. Some hundreds of thousands, and Amazon made more... Is it in revenue or profit off of investing in this company than than everything else that they ever did? If that's what you're saying, uh, it's not 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 ever. It's a year. They it's made about a year. year. They made more in revenue. Yeah, than- they made more from this investment. It's like it's it's quite okay. It's quite wild. I'm I'm just all right. I mean, if, if that's the case, then good for them. You know, yeah. <laughs> you beat the system. But all right, man. Uh, and, there's the, there's the about a million right. Teslas that have been made. So yeah, c- yeah, consider this, you know, 100 times as many. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So per car, Rivian is the most valuable auto. Now, and the thing, it's, uh, people like to look at these sort of, sort of buzzy electric vehicle startups that like, I don't know, yeah, like put a, a, le- a battery powered motor on like a, a, a red wagon and then, you know, say, ah, we're, we are reinventing the world. And then have it look at, oh, well, this is now worth 10 times as much as GM. That's insane. But like, I don't know. I, I think that's not quite the right comparison because like, I don't know, as sort of as new, f- new fuel car bans begin to go in in some countries, all of a sudden those um, petrol car makers may have some real stranded assets there. True. Sure. Right? Like, so I don't think that's completely insane. But the idea is the idea of... Um, it's, it's it's a particular kind of market stupidity to recognize that like the electric car is inevitable uh, because of climate change and therefore you should invest in electric car companies, but also to still invest in oil companies. Yeah. Well, in fact, one of the biggest um, if it, you've got to hedge your bets. What if climate change doesn't happen? Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> then it's back to oil. What if it just doesn't happen? Yeah. What if it just turns out? Yeah, it's like the Mayan apocalypse. What, what of if, yeah, what if you know? every scientist in the world is just like, oh, whoops, oh, we were wrong about that. Yes, we were wrong. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, we well, totally. If you want to talk about oil, it's actually fine. Uh, it's actually fine. Here. We just had some hot weather for a few years, and then you know it's, it's fine. So uh, the um, <laughs> that, that's, invested- that's my political yeah. platform. Is what if climate change is just fine? Well, so mm. they they've been invested in, uh, and again, you can see the biggest proponents of the electric vehicle surge. A lot of them actually have been fossil fuel consuming and producing organizations. For example, Ford was one of Rivian's biggest early backers, as well as the Saudi investment firm Abdul Latif Jamil, which mostly, shockingly, made its money from oil. Hmm. Right? And, no. the, and it's, it's, huge, it's a hugely <laughs> popular thing among, among Saudi investors, it seems, is to put huge amounts of money into electric vehicles because I think they sort of... Because I think they know that they've got, or at least some of them know, that they've got a limited time left as being king oil. And so it's very interesting just to see that the, this, transformation, and again, this transformation of sort of, of one thing to another that depends on things, for example, like public transit still being massively underfinanced in much of the developed world. It depends on enormous and growing amounts of mining of rare earth minerals in like Africa or on the seabed or whatever that these same people are still going to be behind it and still going to be putting enormous amounts of capital into it basically as something to forestall transformation, to a homeostatic force. Right? Cool. Anyway, uh, but the, the, um, they, the, the, the interesting thing as well, though, right, is that they have massively declined right, in, in value since IPOing uh, because oh no, yeah, well, that's bad news for uh, you know plucky <laughs> underdog Jeff Bezos. So wait a second, wait a second. So Amazon made this giant catastrophic investment, uh, made a shit ton of money on it, uh, and then as soon as they opened the books, everyone else looked at them and went, "Oh wait, this does, just doesn't work." This is stupid. It's um, so cool that one company can just have these huge effects. Mm. Yeah. So what awesome. what happened was. Basically, they, they IPO'd earlier this month at a price of about 100 bucks. Uh, they spiked to 172. They're back down, still over 100, but they're at about 120 some odd. Right. That's, that's sort of where, where they're sitting now. So they're still up from their IPO price, but they've gone, they basically spiked and have come back down to earth a little bit. 
But again, the market capitalization per car is completely insane. What you're actually buying is the, the intellectual property or the sort of total addressable market. But then Ford pulls out of the partnership and much of its buzz was based on the fact that Amazon said that they were going to have all of their delivery vehicles come from Rivian. And we talked years ago about this. Those delivery vehicles are going to have like cameras that monitor drivers. <laughs> They're going to have like um, the... But that, that they... All the drivers are going to be on live Jasmine, which is going to subsidize the All cost of shoes, the uh... shoes on head in every case. Um, but the uh, and at the bat, but now essentially Amazon is ex- exhibiting doubts over the battery life. So will that partnership go ahead? I mean, will Amazon throw good money after bad? Who can say? But what is clearly happening is that Amazon made some made a decision and then was mm. able to just move the entire world around itself. Mm. By just g- getting a wild hair, investing in this thing that now looks like it's uh, sort of sh- uh, showing some doubts. So it just shows, I think, that if, if you want to talk about the single most fucked industry, I don't know if it's, uh, um, if it's tech in general. I think it's cars. I think it's automakers. It's just the most fucked vibes industry in the entire world. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. I think people I need to make different investments. Yeah. Jesus Christ! The, the right. most the <laughs> most fucked vibes was still carbon motors, which was going to build the cop car of the future. It's weird, given how like il- like building an electric car isn't like particularly difficult, and there are people who are doing it fairly successfully. But all of the big investment always goes into like the insane like monorail guy in electric car companies, mm. like. Haven't Volvo started an entirely separate co- company that only makes electric cars and like they just work and it's fine because it's a fucking Volvo. Well, um, but like no one cares about that. Everyone's like, no, I want to buy a car from the insane guy. Well, what really annoys a- me yeah, is but- how difficult it like not how difficult, how easy but expensive it is to retrofit electric power into older cars. For instance, say you want a Citroen 2CV, right? Nice, cool, old 60s car, right? Costs nothing to buy, uh, even in pretty good condition. If you want one that's been con- converted to electric professionally, you're paying, uh, you know, the upper end of the 20,000s, like maybe 30,000 pounds. And no one's going to fucking do that. Like, there is, no, there is no cheap new electric car anywhere. Well, and that's because the... And again, this is partly... There's a couple things behind this, right? If you want to look at this from a product perspective, it's because so people like Elon Musk, who made the initial decisions that structured the electric car market as it exists now, they said, how we're going to do this is we're going to start at the top. We're going to create the extremely high-end market for electric cars. And then as we get more and more profitable, we're going to be able to extend that outward. Yeah, which is right? it's, why- it's, it's stupid and backwards. Yeah. And it also means that n- there are no secondhand electric cars either. Yeah. And so you, you struggle to buy one, even with like a pretty heavy subsidy. Yeah. And then from the, from the market perspective, you wonder why these things are, um, are, are, do, are going crazy like they are, right? Why a company that's made like a thousand cars that made, lost $2 billion last year to make 53 cars is now the second most valuable automaker in the entire world, right? It's because I think it's, it's the same... It's because I think it's the same thing behind a lot of cryptocurrencies, right? It's you get into it for the story. You get into it for almost the memeability of it because you like the... And because you like the, the, the yeah, look and, of the, and, the Rivian and, and, card, and the Lucent In particular, card. like, you, yeah. you, uh, you make a car that you want to drive if you're a rich guy, so you make a rich person car. Hmm. And what? You, and then what we end up it's like if, if there had is, never been a Model T, but they started by making yeah. like Dusenbergs. <laughs> no, if they never was a Model T, but they started by making the Homer, basically. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, and I mean, look, the I, I I did I don't know if you all saw there was also the video of the electric Hummer, where it seems like there's this oh no yeah there's this thing that has to happen to like I don't know to have our existing public transportation infrastructure stay standing up, right? If, if you want to sort of solve any kind of problem, mm. um, you're going to have to, at some point, cha- like electrify that public... Tra- uh, they electrify the cars or create public transport. Well, we're not creating public transport, so we have to electrify the cars. And it's only being done in a way that seems to, as you said, Alice, delight rich weirdos. So we're, we can't possibly do anything that will work. All we can do is the impossible. And so we end up, again, the, having these companies standing up factories... Um, the place, um, a Rivian's factory in uh, in Illinois, right? As again, in another one of these um, 
sort of, you know, post-industrial towns. They've said, oh, we're coming in, we're bringing in, you know, thousands of jobs and so on. Of course. And, you know, once again, I mean, it's not saying that Rivian sort of will never work. It's just, it seems so far-fetched, the idea that by starting at these, at this top level, with these, these small-scale high top level, you're going to be able to disseminate um, the, the, this into a mass market, right? It seems completely back. I mean, Tesla's been at it for what, two, um, for dec- uh, nearly two decades at this point. And, you know, they're just now getting their like mid price car. Um, and so it, it seems it seems completely, uh, completely fucking bizarre to me. Um, and the, the other end, right, where it also depends on um, a sort of the, 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 the mass market bit, right? The, the, the bit for Amazon uh, seems to seems to, again, like depend on yeah, the, the, this gigantic underclass of easily exploitable warehouse labor continuing to cause a need for last mile deliveries to happen in in urban centers yeah, right? and, and to use like, order your basket of sex dildos on prime yeah. in order to get it delivered in an electric van mm-hmm. yeah i need those sex dildos now in an environmentally sustainable way mm-hmm. <laughs> um unfortunately so the sex just... dildo does run on petrol uh, well, come yeah. on. Well, it's the only way to get the power needed to get me off. That's right. <laughs> D- doing the like cranking a you know a, a, a petrol chainsaw engine, but like on a vibrator. Yeah. A, b- a big rip cord coming out of the dildo. You got to put one <laughs> foot on the end and just really crank <laughs> now that we're thing. Yeah. You know? yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my. Anyway, look, I, I I think the um like the the. The electric vehicles thing is just, it's fascinating to me. It's going to, it's going to be something that yeah, gets And, and to, the like, cliff is yeah. coming. Like, the total yeah. ban on new uh, internal combustion engine cars is coming, and nobody's fucking taking any notice of it, including large yeah. car companies, because they just yeah. don't want to. Well, they're making the Hummer. Well, that's, that is, that is true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, the thing about an electric car is it comes in different flavors of rich guy. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Amazing. I, and you know, with uh, with 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 with, uh, with th- things as they are, with uh, people's livelihoods continuing to go as they're going, uh, I'm sure that we can expect everybody to make an investment in a brand new electric car soon, or at least for adequate public transport to be provided once that becomes necessary to get around but impossible to use. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Before we move on, uh, Seamus, I want to sort of turn turn back to you. And again, these this story of. The story of the the car industry tra- transforming from what kind of you might say built a lot of the um, sort of industrialized democracies, especially in North America, in the sort of Fordist model of manufacturing, it's clearly moving on to this weird affective uh, sort of el- elites only <laughs> bit of uh, luxury branding. I want to know sort of how you how you react to that. I mean, what you guys talked about before about how this is entirely. Um, like, like there's an entire wide population of people that is walled off from even if they want to make that transition, they're going to be completely unable to make that transition. I mean, these cars are still at exorbitant prices, uh, to say nothing of the electric Hummer, which uh, is $112,000. Um, and as Alice said, the cliff is coming with this. And the cliff is coming uh, you know, sooner than a lot of people uh, may think. And... I am gravely concerned. My main point of concern is that there is going to be a repeat of something like um, what prompted the Gilets Jaunes protests in France, mm. in which people were, in a sensibly in environmentally um, conscious move, uh, working class people were then told that to simply drive, they would be taxed more um, because of the, the nature of the vehicles they were driving. Um, I think there are going to be more and more measures that are punitive in this way without actually doing the work to invest in public transportation, um, to invest in ways to actually make this um, transition possible rather than the the illusion of of, uh, they they want the illusion of being able to do something to be able to say to. Uh, another meeting uh, for the Paris Accords um, at, at COP29 or whatever, that we're making all these measures, we're doing all these different things. But in reality, nothing is happening. And you can push that net zero uh, year end point 
off into the distance as long as you need to. Yeah, I mean, I think the real question to ask about any electric car company when it opens a factory in some you know benighted town in Illinois or Indiana is okay. When are the people who live there ever going to be able to afford one? Like any electric car. Yeah. Um. You know, again, maybe the uh, the manager the factory can and like. The manager, yeah. the guy who manages, every, everybody the manager else the might live miles away yep. and is going to have to either drive to work or walk. So, yep. Yeah, exactly. There seems to be no plan to deal with that. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's talk about the, the main event because most <laughs> normal country of all Saudi Arabia. Prestige. That's right. We talk a lot about problems that have no solutions uh, on, on this show, right? Or at least no solutions that are politically. Um, and indeed, solutions that have no problems. Yeah. That is often another <laughs> thing right. that comes up here. That's true. We do talk a lot. Well, I think Neom is certainly a solution to a non problem, yeah. or it would be if it existed. An attempted solution to the problem of the fact that Saudi Arabia is a completely insane country with too much money. <laughs> Uh, well, that is actually a solution to that. They've paid a lot of designers and consultants a lot of money to draw, do them some really cool renderings. That's yeah, it. it's definitely reducing the amount of money they have. So that's good. Not by enough. No, not by enough. Um, but no, uh, and so this is this is a, l- a little bit of a Neom update because things have happened in Neom. Two big things have actually happened. Um, how should we how should we start, uh, friends? Do we want to talk about the new Neom region. I want to talk to about built. the line real quickly. Yeah. Because we've talked about the okay. line before. And if you're not familiar with yeah. the line, the idea of the line is you just have a, a city, but it's in a line. Yeah, no cars, not even electric. Because everything's walkable. Well, no, well, and not, there not, are not, not until like a, it becomes a giant like berm for Range Rover mum to drive over people in. Yeah, that's right. No, uh, it's Because if you remember, it was going to have a high-speed train... Uh, that runs the entire length of the line and has to stop only every hundred or so meters, which is great for a high speed yeah. train. <laughs> but no, um, it's great. It's so, a really high speed for like thirty meters. So, Seamus, the, I don't know if you if you've seen this. They've actually claimed to have started construction on the line. I, I saw this. I um, yeah. I, I I read my Daily Mail um every morning uh, to, get, to get the latest news of the day, and I saw uh, you know, dipped into those little headlines. They had um, it started work. On the line, finally. Um, mm. I was not able to find any imagery of this whatsoever. Um, <laughs> I do believe it because I do not believe they released any real schematics of what it could look like. So feasibly, uh, mm. groundbreaking anything could count. Yep, um, yeah. I also don't believe <laughs> what, what, I, what I'm gravely concerned by is that I believe they were starting work in the mountains, which would yes. require them drilling mm. through the mountains which is something that I brought up um, in my article on the subject and also um, on my appearance on Chapo Trap House, in, in which I, I was concerned, gravely concerned, that a project meant to preserve something like 95% of nature um, extended so far into the Saudi hinterland um, that it required drilling through the mountains. Yes. Um, which I think we can all agree by any stretch of the imagination when we talk about preserving nature, mm. that does not count. Um, well, mm. yeah. What we've done essentially is we, as Mohammed bin Salman is playing city skylines in sandbox mode mm-hmm. and yeah. has decided to just yet yeah, take out a huge slice of mountain. Yeah, and then he's going to fill oh, cool. that slice with the sewage water. Absolutely. Right. I, I love the lines so much because wow. it's just like, you know what? Cities are usually approximately kind of circular in shape. And the reason for that is it means wherever you live in the city, it's not that difficult to get to another bit of the city. But you know what? For the sake of it being cool, we're just going to not do that. Yeah. This century is established practice of building cities in this way. We're throwing it out of the window, not because we've actually innovated it in any way or we think our design is better, but just because like... Well, they do think their design it's is epic. better, to be fair. Yeah, they're just wrong. Yeah. 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 So here's the, what they've said, right? They've said, we have, we've actually done this. And also, they've done another thing that a lot of scammy tech companies love to do, which is announce indications of interest. And the biggest mm. one here is they've said Oracle, uh, sort of computing uh, software company Oracle, has shown interest or is, is a, not committing necessarily, but is, is looking to um, uh, put itself in one of their like super major data centers that they're going to be able to run because the city is a line because you can't run a major data center <laughs> a guy else. just sprinting no. down a rack of servers a mile long <laughs> awesome oh god but, oh god oh god 
and I mean, this is this thing. This is true for um, this is true for the line. It's also true for their new city, which we'll talk about, uh, 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 their new shape based city, which okay. we're going to talk about in a sec, which is they're building in Neom. Just they keep saying, ah, this will enable all of these wonderful industries. But so far, the cust- the the, mm. the company they've very, announced very a, thin, very very long. Well, the customer Any industry like that they've announced a, 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 a an actual sort of thing for is someone who's just doing a something that requires a lot of cheap real estate to do. That's about it. We've got like a fishing rod factory. Uh, we've got like a pogo stick factory. <laughs> uh, we're looking into a barge pole factory. Anything thin and long, you can make it in Neom. It's the perfect. You cannot have a wide factory. If you want a wide factory, you can, you can fuck off to Riyadh with that, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening right how and because there's more hints though that are coming out as to how they're organizing neom which mm. is they're going to which is that they're going to be company subsidiaries of neom right, right. which the, a company subsidiary of a political entity does seem a little yeah, bit it's gonna be uh, a, a william company gibson town if you will um, yeah oh it's the british government yeah um but they they talk about right they, they keep saying things like we're on the cutting edge of artificial intelligence and cognitive solutions mm. to resolve uh, impossible paradoxes uh, and Neo, they say they say <laughs> impossible paradoxes which is the data sorry did yeah. Nathan Bali write this like what is going on but Neom is in Saudi but make no mistake it is also in the world that, yeah that, technically yes mm, mm. No, that, that, you, no I agree we are definitely in the world it's, it, it's going to be in the world in Dubai the little microcosm world they're going to have to draw a little line on the Saudi Arabia part I think we were recording. Um, well, there's your problem. I can't remember who said. I think either it was Liam or or <laughs> said like the AI doesn't exist. Yeah. Like like so, no, the, the, these things are are they're they're. I mean, we all know that they're buzzwords, but I I I trawl through these videos, through these reports, through these forums, and no one has ever been able to explain to me what artificial intelligence entails in this respect like what what processes just that just that ai will automatically do all of these things which don't need ai to, to oh well it's it's, it's when when you live in the line when you live yeah. in neon what's going to happen is an ai will tell you it looks like you bought a fishing pole would you like to buy a pool queue yeah that's right but also the other question is um why does the city need to be laid out like that to have ai <laughs> Why does it need to be aligned to have a big data center? Because well, 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 then you only have to run one formatting, wire. When you're formatting a, a wire, all right, when you curve it around, it's automatically like one millisecond. It takes longer. It's just one line. Yeah. It's like you, Tron. Well, all right. It, it, it's, it's mostly all of this is in aid of like better latency for gaming. Yeah, that's they're gonna, right. They're going to get a bunch of like, uh, you know, gamers and like professional influencers to move out there to talk about how good Call of Duty plays. Oh. That's mm. literally all they want. Uh, but they, I'll tell you what they've actually started building on the line before the we line move on to the line would make a thing. good Counter-Strike map. The, the new would. thing is, you're right, it would. Mm. Uh, they're building the, remember we had talked about the infrastructural spine that runs underne- underneath the line? Yeah, where the all tunnel, of the impossibility. Yes. The tunnel yeah, all where the all of the maids will work, yes. Yeah, <laughs> all of, yes. But all of the impossible contradictions of the promises of the line versus reality, mm. they all live in the tunnel. Um, yeah, okay. Like, well, that's a good locks. place to keep them because then yeah. no one will see them. So they're building the tunnel right now. The chubs in the, the chubs <laughs> in the original sense. Yeah, they are. They are building yeah. the tunnel. However, their innovation is they're not starting at one end and building to the other end. They're starting at both ends and building to the middle. Well, that, thereby that's, saving time. That's not well, actually the channel tunnel. Yeah, I was going to say that's what they <laughs> did with the channel tunnel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, that's not an innovation. You just you, you, it's what you've been doing since the beginning of construction. Yeah, you, you simply double your construction costs and halve your time. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's genius, amazing. <laughs> Look, we we are running out of time to get the line in place, right? Yeah, yes. of no, um, course. I, I want to talk about Oxagon. Sure, uh, Oxagon. Seamus, what is Oxagon? Oxagon, a region of Neom. Um, Mm. Is a is as it says uh, a region of neon that is in a um, it's not an it's in an it's in an octagonal shape, um, mm-hmm. seven square miles in diameter. Mm-hmm. Um, one half is on land, the other half is in the sea, um, as a fully uh. automated floating port, which will be the largest floating structure on planet Earth. Um, uh-huh. Why not the line? The line? Why not the, the line? Um, <laughs> 
it was the title of it was stupid because it was translated into Arabic, not as Al Khat, mm. but as um, the line. Oh, um, no. Atsigan is less of a stupid name because it is transliterated into, it's not a real English word. So it's transliterated. Um, okay. But they also have to use a letter that does not exist in formal Arabic um, in order to transliterate it. Uh, it's borrowed from Farsi, the Cha. Um, sounds different. Um, now, I really want to emphasize that this is probably the most reasonable idea that has been suggested for Neon so far. And the this low is bar. But also, yeah, yeah. If, if this had been proposed by any other coastal city in the world, um, you know, New York, uh, uh, DC, uh, Cairo, uh, it's Alexandria, et cetera. The three, um, the three genders. <laughs> um, this would be one of the dumbest ideas you'd ever heard in your entire life. Um, it yeah. defies all reasonable um, expectations for what a port is reasonably supposed to be. Um, there is no reason for it to exist, um, but probably has the most possibility of happening at this current time. Well, it's it, it's because at least like with the line, they were mm. never able to articulate why it needs to be a line. Yeah. Mm. With or, or what it would do other than mm. just sort of be a place where you could innovate. Unlike sure. So that's why they needed yeah. all that AI, because there was no actual yeah. eye going into the design. <laughs> so o- Oxagon has a purpose that's intelligible, which, as you say, Seamus, it's supposed to be a port. It's supposed to be a port that is supposed to uh, bring in the blue economy. Which is a term used by economists to like, like, for example, there's the green economy where you're building on land, cities that exist on land to become uh, environmentally sustainable, to bring in some sort of um, equilibrium with the nature around them. The blue economy is similar, but it's for the sea. Um, Therefore, I, I guess in theory, yes, a floating structure one that is not nailed down, um, one that is not anchored to the seafloor, one that can have its gates open and let in ships and other wildlife that is sustainable. Yes. However, the issue is, is that there is a reason why there has never been a floating structure of this size before. What? B- because, it it's stupid? I mean, just think about it for like five seconds. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. If if there anything goes wrong here, because it is an automate, it's not only an automated port, but it's a gigantic thing where everybody lives on this port. A lot of people live on this port. Yeah, it's going to be if, like Disney Drive times a thousand in there, naming the streets because everybody who works on it is crushed by a container. Well, it's also crucial for exporting. You know, no one's just fishing rods really. and barge poles yeah. that they're going to make in the line. Yeah. So- Please, Look, like, like if any, like, um, if we're just if we're just talking about like there was an explosion in uh the Dubai port like couple, like um about a year ago I think, um a little less than a year ago. If you can imagine like any sort of disaster befalling this, mm-hmm. the entire thing is put into jeopardy. The reason why they put things on land is f- they're doing <laughs> it for a reason. The thing is, though, this is this is a huge subsidy to the world's struggling disaster movie industry. Like, really, we haven't had a new kind of disaster movie since we've done volcano movies, right? But like, in terms of like engineering shit, we had Titanic. That was like 1912. Whatever. Who gives a shit? Basically, after Towering Inferno, we kind of ran out of ideas. But now we have all of this shit to give people ideas of. Oh, what if the uh, robot AI container port floating on Water goes wrong. Mark yep. Wahlberg in the Octagon. Stop he's, 9/11. He's, he's simply <laughs> stop this. Listen, listen. Yeah, sometimes, fighter. sometimes, sometimes is floating away. N- N- Neom, <laughs> Neom's going to ask for a single Boston PD homicide detective to come to the port to investigate a murder, <laughs> and then that murder's going to unravel a whole series of things at the same time that the port starts sinking. <laughs> oh, that's actually pretty Boston good. Sensor confidential right. too. Yeah. Copyright, copyright. That's I'm, us. I was just built to sell Hondas, and then they made me write scripts to Mark Wahlberg. So I got to investigate a fucking murder in Saudi Arabia. So the thing, here, here's what here's what they say about Oxagon. No, I'm, right? I, I can't. Say, I'm still thinking about the Mark Wahlberg in Saudi Arabia <laughs> thing. He's he's paired with like a he's paired with like a hard bitten good like partner. <laughs> no, I'm I'm just doing this now. 
yeah. the, the Saudi robotics isomer. Yeah. <laughs> so what we said, what you have, they they say that Oxagon being a uh, a, a sort of uh, a shape based port, right? They did one shape, they did a two dimensional <laughs> shape. They're it's ready for a more shape. Shape based is on. Uh, does any other port just not have a shape? Well, it, yeah, no, that's I right. Think they're, no, they're globulous. No other port. <laughs> no other port makes its shape as core part of an identity as Oxagon does. Um, or, or sorry, no, I, I'm not sure that's <laughs> even true. Because <laughs> I feel like ports are traditionally all. built with like seawalls in such a way, like in a very deliberate shape, so as to contain. Yeah, but they the just, it's not called the square port. Yes. that is true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. There's, so the, there are seven sectors that Oxagon is going to sort of innovate in, enable innovation in. Where you couldn't do it in a less regularly yeah, shaped uh, place. G- gaming, uh, streaming, uh, uh, pickup artistry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 b boying, MCing, DJing, graffiti. Yeah. Uh, no, so there's and if industries are sustainable ener- energy, autonomous mobility, so self driving cars, okay, uh, water innovation, so in- inventing. Yep, uh, there's water's yeah. right there. You couldn't get it unless you were on it in a shape. And you have to be floating on it and living where, while floating on it. Yes. Unless also, you live among it, how will you innovate it? To enable, it, you have to be living on a big barge 100 percent of the time, yeah. all the time, and you want to innovate in water. You we're can't doing go to finding one. neon, <laughs> sustainable food production, health and well-being. Which again, all of this is necessary. Uh, technology and digital manufacturing. And modern methods of construction, all powered by 100% renewable energy. Right? I love it's- the idea of the Saudi ruling class talking to you about health and well-being. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the unhealthiest looking motherfuckers on the face of the planet. That's right. Listen, um, Jamal Khashoggi, that was a wellness intervention gone wrong. They were trying to do <laughs> cupping on him and it got a bit out of hand. He oh, yeah, no. did lose a lot of weight. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, what's, what's one thing that's true, right, is Oxagon appears to be mainly... Series of 3D renderings, just as the line was mostly 3D rendering some YouTube clips, and then now a big trench that will never get built on. Hmm. Um, and they love to talk yeah, about in how, memory of the fallen. Well, they love to talk about how they, they oh, we are building on all of our principles from Neom, and it's like, well, the principle <laughs> like there's no principles to build on, yeah, yeah. Uh, the principles to build on are again like saying things, saying things like all communities will be walkable, like in Neom, hmm. or via hydrogen powered mobility. So yeah. that's famously very stable, well, the, I assume. The again, a- another part of, of the, the another part of the Mark Wahlberg movie falls into place. Yeah, one yeah. one car all, gets into yeah, it. Why yeah. are all of these cars exploding during the car chase? Oh, that's because we filled them with hydrogen. Yeah, yeah they're all mini Hindenburgs. Yeah, and so we we've. I know. Don't don't yell at us. I'm sure that there's a, a, there's probably some. I don't know anything about hydrogen propelled cars. I'm just aware that why would anyone yell at you? Those are pretty dangerous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the principle of neon is that it's a line, and a, and an octagon is eight lines, so it's eight times better. Yeah. They're 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 just knocking it out of the park here. Perfect. Yeah. It's gonna have yeah, eight that's... fishing pole factories. Yeah, yeah, I'm very excited the for their next... octagonal baseball stadium that's in the center. <laughs> I'm excited for their next project, which is going to have, like, a 3D element, where it's going to be oh, like yeah. a prism. I was talking about that with my, uh, my friend Mary the other day. We were talking about, are they going to go for a cube or, like, a cone of some kind? Maybe a sphere? Well, the reason that, like, we, we, we already had the sphere in London, remember? The, yeah. the, the, un- the like, weird oh, sphere. Oh, that's an orb. But there's no oh, innovation I'm so- going I'm on sorry, there. I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, also, like... Saudi's already had an orb. The, the yeah. reason it's an octagon, I will believe this to my dying day, is that MBS was trying to figure out what weird shape to do next, and he was listening to, like, Joe Rogan. <laughs> yes, I think that's probably true. I mean, yeah. Also, if you want to talk as well about like um, uh, millennial, uh, uh, let's say, uh, r- country rulers making insane decisions based on like tech hype, look no further than the fact that uh, El Salvador is now creating <sighs> a Bitcoin city on the slope of an active volcano. Of course, it is. I saw that in the notes, and I thought this has to be a joke that Riley wrote. No. It's like, no, oh, that's no, crazy. It's, it's, it's real. No, it's, it's real. real. That's that metaphor is a bit on the nose because their finance minister is a big crypto guy. And then yeah. after this is complete on opening day, he's going to invite a single Boston Police Department detective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't even speak fucking Spanish. He's got he's got an air into Japan. the volcano. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah, what we're doing, we're just building um 
uh, 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 we are we're building uh, like Mount Pompeii, basically. But ever, everyone's really excited to be in Pompeii, or or we're building the completely imaginary. Uh, it's it's all just different Colonia Dignidads. Just some of them are going to get more worked out beyond three D renderings versus others. But it's all just essentially, uh, it's it's all just uh, these. Uh, um, you know, it's intentional communities. Whether it's the intentional community of like a prince who dreams of like instead of being a net technology importer, being a net technology exporter, and figures you need to make sh- cities in funny shapes to do that, or whether it's a, a pre- not and also not finance minister, president uh, uh, Naya Bukele being like, yeah, Sal- El Salvador is gonna like we're going to create a new kind of flat tax city on the slopes of an active volcano. <laughs> this is such an amazing yeah. act of hubris. Like the idea of building a cryptocurrency city on the slope of an active volcano is such a powerful metaphor for cryptocurrency in general. <laughs> yes, but yes. crypto people are so stupid that they're like, "Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> anything could happen." <laughs> <laughs> no, no, when I say active volcano, I don't mean it's like currently erupting, but like well, not yet. It is that a volcano away from Mark Wahlberg. But to that get wouldn't there. have stopped them. Well, it, crucially, it, it is. A, there is on the side of a, a volcano there is geothermal activity and it is it, it does like vent steam a lot so i wouldn't and it's not inactive let's just say that a not inactive volcano and again they've said well it's going to have a it's going to be a full-fledged metropolis with residential and commercial areas restaurants and an airport as well as a port and rail service and the thing is you need to have a city that's built like a circle with a big plaza that's shaped like the Bitcoin symbol in the middle in order to it's actually true. That's what they're going to do. Well, they're not going to actually do it. That's what they're saying they're going to do. Okay, yeah. In order to have all that, you need to have it powered by cryptocurrency on the side of a mountain. No city has ever had that before. Yeah, that's right. Well, because all the geothermal activity will power the cryptocurrency. That is the plan. Yes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 Oh, see, oh, Pliny the Elder mining Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Pliny the Elder in but... favor of this idea because the El Salvadoran president, like, you see the photos from the launch event of the city, and he clearly understands the aesthetic that the idea like evokes in your mm-hmm. mind. Saudi Arabia is playing to this, you know, uh, car commercial type vibes yes. when they announce Oxagon and, and the line and all these different things, and it doesn't work. In the mm-hmm. same way that it should, they should be embracing every level of absurdity that they're going yeah, for. Absolutely. Well, because they're they're trying to make they're not trying to make uh like like Saudi. You're right. They're one generation behind in terms of advertising insane doomed boondoggles. So, like, say insane doomed boondoggles <laughs> a few times for me, please. <laughs> uh, we'll just we, we can cut it and you can re- you can make a drop it. Doggle. <laughs> uh, but it's right. These insane doomed boondoggles are supposed nice. to be fun and epic and they're supposed to be kind of a joke it's not supposed to be it's not supposed to look like the first few minutes of irobot anymore that's over Mm. that's from like 2012 you know it's 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 all sort of it's all supposed to be a big joke and i think um i think i think bukele gets it I think that, yeah, yeah uh, MBS, joker. as you say, doesn't. He almost, it's something chilling about a, a president who finds the idea of crypto to be almost <laughs> funny. Well, I, I think really <laughs> what, 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 what's always striking to me, though, about these different ideal communities, whether it's the uh, Georgia city in the desert, whether it's the crypto city on the, mount, on the volcano, or whether it's the various like, um, uh, different shapes that uh, MBS is trying out in the desert. Yeah, what your three always, possible start locations well, in the Trash Future video game. What always strikes me about that is they're always claiming that they're going to build these cities to do things that you already do in normal cities, like have a job and walk somewhere and go to a restaurant or whatever. Not die. And, and mm. what, what's so striking is I think it shows this, especially among the powerful, just a complete lack of imagination. Where they're saying, well, we want to do the thing that we've always had, but we can only do it in this completely fucking insane way. Where we can, all, all we can do is the complete impossible to continue perpetuating what is pretty normal. Like, you can have a data center wherever. You don't need to have yeah, this. It's, it, it, it's, yeah. it's a little bit of a refinement here of we can only do the impossible in pursuit of the ordinary. It's great. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. There is it, definitely, it could- I think... Uh, I, I think there's there's a pretty significant difference between what is actually being attempted in the Middle East and what is just being purported by Saudi Arabia in particular. Like Egypt, for example, um, proposed the new administrative capital um, 
that is just a little bit south of Cairo. Also and features meant, an octagon. Yeah. Uh, because, also features an octagon, mm. the largest military headquarters of any national army Because ever. they had to go up from the, the Pentagon. The Americans have got five sides, yeah. That's the, literally the, true, the, yes. The point of it is, ostensibly, they, they made it pretty low-key. They built all these gigantic things, but their point of it was ostensibly to relieve congestion on Cairo, because it's a very big city, going to become even bigger. But the reason why it's actually being built and the reason why it's actually going to come into fruition is because CC plans to actually live there and inhabit there. And he means for it as a, as a means of actual power to prevent any sort of protest against his rule because no one aside from the elite and the intelligentsia is going to live there. And you can't have a Tower um, Square if there's a Tower Octagon. Exactly. And Neom, you know, it's got all of the gigantic structures, it's got all of the big plans, but even though King Salman, um, who, who, you know, his, his mind is essentially vacated at this point, King Salman may, may hold his cabinet sessions there and there might be um, meetings between, you know, Mike Pompeo or whatever there, but they're not going to move the whole thing from Riyadh to Neom. It's purely to generate revenue and to generate PR and to um, ostensibly move toward environmental goals and to project Saudi power. But soft power is not, it exists inside your mind. And from that perspective, it's very hard to, you know, extract. <laughs> your mind it's real. makes it real. <laughs> It's, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's, it's real in your mind, but it's not physical. It's not measurable in terms of revenue or, or, or um, it, it, it's, not, it's not concrete in that mm, same yeah. way. If you die in the octagon, you <laughs> die in real life. You're going to drown. The octagon is sinking. Sorry, you are dead. What I mean to say is you will die in the octagon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty much 100% death rate. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I think, like, well, I think that's, that's quite perceptive, right? That, that Saudi's mission, I think, since... I don't know, for the last, I don't know what, like, like 40, 50 years or whatever, especially sort of that sort of really turned up ever since they decided to become a, you know, a San Francisco and the Arabian Peninsula is that is this idea that it is, as you say, Seamus, an effective um, um, uh, ploy. It, the idea is to change how everyone thinks about them by imagining what they would be excited about if it was announced to them. And it, it's so true that it's so obvious it's so obvious that none of these announcements are ever meant to do anything. They're just meant to cause the reaction to the announcement. And that's it. Exactly. And, and, and I mean, if you want to think about, like, if you want to be cynical about it, right, which of course I do, is you'd say, well, even <laughs> beyond all of that, right, they, if you want to look at what, what Saudi Arabia needs to do is they need to constantly tell a story about how they're central, just like the automakers who are trying to, like, make a, a, an electric Hummer. They're trying to say, well... As the world transitions to a new form of energy, presumably, uh, we are going to remain central to it because all of the green innovation is going to come out of here. We're going to invest in Rivian, this company that made like five cars. We're going to, we're going to imagine the, the octagon that's going to make shipping completely zero carbon. Uh, but at the same time, we're going to try to make sure that no progress gets made at COP, like which the Saudi delegation is famous for doing. Right? It, it's, it, to me, it suggests... It's, it's a deeply cynical thing where it says, instead of looking at the very difficult things that need to be done, what if we all imagined a fun story where we all got to get everything we wanted and play with some fun toys at the same time? It, is, it seems to me to be to, to serve that purpose for them, to be not just PR for how you feel about Saudi, but PR for Saudi saying, our, it is very, still very important that our economy is very... Uh, um, uh, sort of buoyant that everyone continues to give us lots of money because otherwise we're never going to get to develop the triangular prism that is going to invent like a new kind of carbon capture technology that you couldn't have invented well, in a the, city. The, of the a thing is, shape. the triangular prism is going to have to be invented in the triangle. And you also and you also have to remember that you know, kind of building off of that, Saudi Arabia gave one of the longest estimates for when it was going to become uh, net zero carbon emissions. Um, amongst the world. It's only superseded by India. It's like 2060s, um, right? 2060. That along with um, Qatar, uh, Nigeria, Ukraine, uh, Russia, China. Um, try, can you feasibly, and this is not meant to be you know, kind of a, a metaphysical 
thought experiment, but can you really foresee with a concrete vision where you will be in 2060? What job you will have, what career you will have, what the world will be like in 2060? Yeah, I, can, I can foresee it. Uh, I'm going to be uh, the head of Imagineering at the uh, <laughs> rectangular prison. <laughs> prison? I mean prison. Yeah, no, it's a new prison that they're building in Neom. <laughs> They finally, they finally built a rectangular prison. It took this. It took Neom's free, like sort of um, um, very lax planning laws uh, and the vision of uh, MBS in order to build the rectangular prison. (laughs) (laughs) In in twenty sixty, I will. In twenty sixty, I will be sixty nine years old. Nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, yeah, no, I, I don't rate my chances of pretty much anything. The, the the but exactly yeah, like the the point is is that Finland is suggesting you know net zero in uh, twenty thirty. A lot of European countries twenty thirty five twenty forty. These are things that administrations, even though the long term, can plan for. They have to make electronic promises for that have concrete plans for. Saudi Arabia, when you are suggesting something that is forty years in the future, you have a lot of wiggle room. To put things off, um, to make a lot of announcements, to continually say that you are moving in this direction, you're almost there, you're on the path to getting net zero, you're on the path uh, of, of becoming this uh, uh, a renewable energy powerhouse. If only we had a little bit more money, if only we had a little more soft power, if only we had a little more attention, then we could finally get here because we are you know, the most fossil fuel reliant uh, economy on, this, on the planet Earth, one of the most. Wouldn't you want that to happen? Don't you want that to happen? Don't you want to give us the resources that you want? Why are you denying us resources? Why are you not believing in our drive? Why would we be announcing all these things if we didn't have that drive? Um, it's a really pathetic, awful game that I wish, like, like what Riley was saying about how they're meant to evoke in a reaction. If it was purely to evoke a reaction, then, you know, you pay attention to it, but you, you kind of like scoff at it. But, you know, people are being evicted from their land in order to build this thing in Neom. Mm. People are people have been killed by the police for refusing evictions. They are drilling into mountains in nature because they are caught between the impossible promises of an insane person. Um, true psychopath in every sense of the world. And, you know, you're being paid to do something and you can't not do the thing that you are being paid to do exorbitant amounts for. Um. Yeah, it sucks. Um, world, world, world sucks. Um, that's what this podcast is all about. Yeah, at least it we is? have. Wait, uh, at least we have. Sorry, Shams, you're on the Good Future oh, podcast. Oh, this is the uh, wrong one. Yeah, uh, you're wondering oh, this, why this you're like doing the this. Goosebumps episode. I I woke up and I. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, this, um, yeah, this is think? actually SponCon for the line, so yeah. we're gonna need to retake. So this that is, bit. This, <laughs> this, this is this is a podcast that we do as a piece of performance art where we imagine a world in which climate change isn't just gonna like go away. Yeah. Where That's where right. we go? Ah, what if it actually does just get worse, and we actually no, do have to do something about it? The oxygen. It's just a little silly works. thing that we do. Yeah, exactly. No, it's. Yeah, with the, the oxygen on the line, all that works, and then it's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, um, I, we've, I think we've, we've gone for about time, uh, so I want to say, Seamus, thank you so much for coming and hanging out again. As always, it is an absolute pleasure to have you. Oh, it is always a pleasure to be on this wonderful podcast with all these wonderful people. Yeah, do you help yourself to a mini quiche on the way Absolutely. out? Absolutely. Oh. If people want more Seamus, where can they find you? If, if they truly do want more Seamus... Um, they can More go. More Seamus, they cry. We, 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 you, you can go on Twitter. Um, I am at, uh, at Seamus underscore Malik uh, on Twitter. Um, I have a Substack where I talk about international affairs. Um, MalikAfsalid.substack.com. That link will be uh, in the description oh, of this episode. We will be linking. Um, and also, if you like, uh, I don't know, if you like my persona, but you do not like anything that you heard on this podcast, I have a Substack for film where I talk about obscure film. Uh, burnt nitrate uh, mm. at uh, Go to that too. Mm. So if you want to hear uh, all about your favorite movie uh, about the train pulling into the station, check out the <laughs> Substack. Mm. They actually had to movie. film that in the line. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect for it. I would, you, could film, you would film train pulling into station one, 
Train pulling into station two. A single film- Boston police detective has yeah. to stop yeah. that train from pulling into the station. That's yeah. right. You could do the, the spin-off series, The Station Master. You could do all kinds of great things in Neom at the line with train pulling into state. Now, I don't know exactly what film you could make in Oxagon, other than that Mark Wahlberg one, but I think we're going to come up with some good ones. Anyway. Sort of um, Battle Royale UFC. Oh, Ooh. that's right. Perfect. Mm, yeah. Anyway, if you liked all of this, don't forget... Uh, that we have a Patreon, five bucks a month. You get a second episode every week. It's not this the free week, one. This week, we subjected Nish Kumar to Robert Peston's book. Uh, we subjected all of ourselves Nish. to it, to be fair. <laughs> I subjected myself to it the uh, most. Roberto Pesto. <laughs> Once right. again, Riley is the only person to have read a book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again and again. And again, mm. it's going to keep happening. This is, this uh, anyway. is why we have a podcast with a one literate person. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I, I have to, I can't be exposed to them too often. Anyway, uh, it's time for us to eat dinner, and uh, we're going to see you on the bonus. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.